Good evening and welcome to the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting August 22nd, 2018 at 7 p.m. here at the municipal offices in South Deerfield. Um, we'd like to start our meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please rise? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. This meeting is being recorded. Uh, the first thing on our agenda is to re review and approve the minutes from June 7th, 2018. I make a motion we approve them as presented. Second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, at 7 o'clock we have a, a hearing or something to listen to from Karen Gaston from Diamond Shine. Is she here? Sure, would you like to come up and set the table? Sure. Yes. Welcome. Hi there. Hi there. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. <clears throat> so I'm Go here. Ahead. That's okay. <laughs> So I'm looking to do a marijuana cultivation unit on mm -hmm. um, in your approved property for a special permit approval for recreational marijuana cultivation on a property located on West Side. It's it's not like labeled. There's no number, so I'm just going to give you the lot information. Sure. The West Side of Route Five and Ten Greenfield Road, and just to the north of Conway Road, known as Map One Fifty Nine Lot Fourteen. So it's on the same side of the road as Yankee Candle. Okay. Going. Perfect. That it's way. kind of across the street from the fire station. Yes. Uh, a little bit on angle, yes. Okay. Perfect. Oh. Okay. So um, the property is located on, the property is currently vacant, obviously. It's owned by State um, Development LLC of 207 River Road, South Deerfield, Mass., and contains approximately 17.25 acres. Okay. Um, the project will be run by myself, who has strong ties to um, my godfather in the community um, as well. Um, James Pachesnik owns state road, uh, state development. Um, I run a vocational program actually in East Windsor, Connecticut, so I have a lot of business experience for folks with disabilities. So this is part of like my healing kind of social enterprise piece. Um, I came from Massachusetts, so it's kind of like coming home. We plan to be active and engaged in the community, listening to all needs and giving back. Our social enterprise is all about inspiring and working to create space for healing and love. We take a value position on quality in all we do and will continue to do this in our cultivation, our marijuana cultivation. Pending all required approvals, Diamond Shine will lease the northern portion of lot 14 and we have a little bit of a site plan. The site plan was revised too. Um, I don't know if you guys had the little box on it that said dispense rate, hope not, because that's not intended to be in it, but okay. it should be the new one without it. If it is, just please, oh, yeah. I see. You please just give it a little X off. Yeah. I apologize it wasn't in your, um, marijuana zone so it's I in the north it. versus you guys gotcha. had the dispensary slotted for the south correct yep so diamond shine will lease the northern portion of 14 of lot 14 greenfield road site from state development and construct a 5,000 square foot purpose design building which will be a greenhouse to contain a state-of-the-art year-round recreational marijuana cultivation facility for the cultivation of 11 different strains of recreational marijuana Related infrastructure will include parking and loading areas, utilities and site security infrastructure and systems. Uh, the initial cost of the building mechanical systems and environmental controls is estimated to be around 200,000. That doesn't include the site development like the driveway. I'm pretty sure my architect also said that we needed a permit for the driveway for a special easement. Uh, related, oh, excuse me, the initial cost of the site security infrastructure and systems is estimated to be 50,000. The cultivation unit itself will create at least five full-time year-round benefited employee positions, which will be preferentially offered to folks in Deerfield by the timing and placements of advertising for employment. We're set up for our host, agree, our host meeting as well. I don't know if that's the right, the community meeting. Mm -hmm. yep. I know I used the wrong terminology. I apologize okay. for September 6th, so we'd like to... September move forward 6th. with we will continue to do the site plan a better site plan and apply for zoning for that as well okay. 
I have a copy of the map survey too. Oh, oh great. I have a brochures. I have that, but I think she has something a little bit more than the brochures. So. Just so you guys had more of an idea. Yeah, that'd be great. <clears throat> of course. Um, can I? Uh, oh, sure. Please, yeah, okay. please come up. So here and. So it was originally done a while back for actually a site plan development for Home Depot. So mm -hmm. obviously you guys can see in that, but it's really small. This is a large one. I have the big old maps at home too. Okay. And so, there's copies for oh, that's you guys as well. 16, that's the on-ramp, is that right? No, it's the 91. I mean, yeah, right. On -ramp and the 16 goes yep. up and then. This is a fire station. Gotcha. And Scams, the, yep. And the uh, animal hospitals. So that's so nice. Yeah, area. the special yeah. animal hospital. But, yeah. yeah. Do you know, have you applied to the state for a curb cut along that section of the road yet? No, sir. Okay. Nope. That will have to be done. And I'm in the process of applying to the Massachusetts Cannabis Commission as well. Right. Obviously, we have to get state approvals sure. first. Yep. <laughs> well, this kind of simultaneously to that. Yeah. But, yeah. As far as that um, access goes, you sh just a suggestion, you should check into it sooner than later. I absolutely so I've, will. I've heard that other people trying to do, not the same similar business, but getting curb cuts, have, it's been taking quite some time. So no problem. Yep, absolutely. Who would I contact for that if that's... It would probably start at District 2 in Northampton at the Department of Transportation office there. Thank you. Uh, Jay Ely is the permitting person. Thank you. Very helpful. Hmm. I guess, is there, uh, I don't see anything else. Do you have any info on security so far in, in this packet? Like, <clears throat> I actually are, have security so. is outlined in my business plan. Oh, okay. As well. I did have, I, I left just two copies. Yeah. So there should be at somewhere. If not, I can get you guys more copies as well. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. Does yeah, this that. sit here? Looks familiar, but they all look, they all have similar. Yeah. Things. I'll get those for you. Yep. Thank you. And I dropped off in the front near there next to the plans are the actual brochures. Right now, you guys had like the draft, but we got the brochures, and okay. I also gave you some business cards as well. Great. Thanks. I'll also have more on top of that for the Massachusetts Cannabis Commission. I, I'm applying, I applied for one in Connecticut too, so it's pretty extensive yeah. in terms yeah. of the documentation. Sure. So. Yeah, I know that CCC is looking for a lot. Yep. Yes. And the regulations continue to change as well. So. We've heard. <laughs> includes all the um, 
submissions were part of the Akim Vitas for the interest, because we went back and forth. You did, okay. Sure. What's that? It's a big investment. Yes, sure definitely, on. yes. What's the status of this industry in Connecticut? I'm sorry, you what said is you're it? trying to do this in Connecticut also. Connecticut's really... What's the status of it there? Um, they Stay had on. an application process on April 9th which they were looking for three to 11 new actual just medical dispensaries. Okay, we are not recreationally yeah. legal yet. Um, there's been buzz that we will be in 2019. I don't know because we're up for a big governor election, which may right. change from the Democrat we've had for many years. So we're not sure yet right. um, how that's going to run and what the positions of the new governor will be. But the word was 2019. So they had an application process on April 9th. Uh, myself and my team have applied. The problem is I actually tried to do the dispensary and trying to do it in my town it, that I live in. I have two children, everything. We were going to obviously make it safe, everything. I mean, all of those um, pieces. But we're actually going for zoning approval. We've been at it for four hearings for four months. So mm -hmm. it's not, you know, it's just like Massachusetts. There's certain places that they're not allowing it, that they're banning right. it, you right. know. So Thank good thing we had that conversation. <clears throat> Absolutely. So... And they're only set to approve like three to eleven, and there was like seventy applicants. Oh, so fine. even if we know, went through the, it, as we are going through the process, they may still say no. Yeah. Thanks, we're yeah. gonna approve some other folks. Sure, sure. Property taxes. And we're trying to do it more locally and more like where we know where we are instead of like bigger companies, things like that, because that's who seems to be rolling in because of the um, revenue Absolutely. that you need, um, or the, the actual investment that you need to even right. make the revenue. Yeah, to get it started. Yep, that's <laughs> what I was looking at. Your yes. Yeah. Wendy, did you have a chance to look at this yet? Is this, um, did you, well, you pick up a copy of our host agreement? <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Yes, I have a copy yeah. of the host yeah. agreement. Yeah. That's, I was yes. just looking There's through the page that, to see if everything was identified. That one last letter, <coughs> that one last word that any other <coughs> thing that hasn't been fixed yet other than that that is basically what you okay yep. thank you and I've sent that to uh, the attorneys for all the uh, interested parties um, I don't what page was that on the uh, uh, oh it was uh, section 1b 1b Somewhere up here, I don't, I don't remember where it was. Oh, it was right here. Any? Is that yes. what you're talking about? Yes. Yep. Oh. The, the CI payment, if it was going to be changed. Oh, yeah, it should. Okay. It, oh, no, if it was good. I mean, it was, uh, it's just any and other. Oh, this was other. It was going to be changed to It's going to be changed to any. Just so that they, we knew that they were, even if it was sold to themselves. Right. That's the only thing we're going to change. Okay. And the if or is, I guess, it doesn't really. Um, oh, okay. It, so it, it, it refers sounds, back. Right. It refers back to the yeah the previous if, yeah. paragraph. Right. Yep. Okay. I mean, we will so have you'll have other cracks at this because you'll be negotiating. Yeah. Maybe. So we'll just <laughs> take it. Okay. Uh, we can read this down. Boy, mm. if you if you get to see most of this, I, I I'm going to assume that they'll all be crafted after this one. So. Every time I look at one from a different organization, I'm not going yeah, to be what wondering, she, you know, if there's something bigger. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Very good. There yes, there. that's correct. Yes, okay. the one you you had asked. Okay. So, yes, we're good. Good. We'll good. Review all the stuff. And yeah. And so, back. what what's the next process that I do? Or I just contact you. Your meeting. My and you yes. have to prepare, yes, if you look at that checklist. Yes, I sure do. I have that. So you have to have them tape. You have to evidence that you've done all of those yep. things. No problem. Follow that checklist. I will. Don't yep. you worry. Perfect. Okay. Thank, Thank you guys very oh. much. Thank you very I much. I appreciate nice it. Nice yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. You too. Thanks for coming. Okay.
think. Oh, do you, oh thank you very and, much. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you, um, you want to keep this? Uh, if you guys don't need it, I will keep it. If you want to keep it, you can. I have the big ones. Do you feel like you need it? I don't no. think no. we do. No, that's fine. No. Yep, that's fine. No you thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you might, it, it's very wet there, so you might want to um, set up a meeting with the Conservation Commission. Yeah. Because it, it would be, you know, that's going to take a little while. No problem. Yep. Okay. I'll get on that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Seven fifteen. Uh, we're, we're skipping over that. They're going to be next week. Okay. They the don't. hard work. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's here. Oh, I didn't see that. Right. Uh, do you want to wait till no. seven thirty, or do you they're, all they're all here? They're all here. Okay. Okay. Sean Neal with the landfill solar. And Ma and and Ma and David, why don't you come up too? So in case we have questions. <laughs> You're not getting out that easy. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Hi, thanks for having us. Thank you for coming. So, I was like, would you like me and David to introduce or? Um, yeah, tell hi. us who you are. And <laughs> you have to say who you are, David, just in case. <laughs> I'm David Gilbert Keith, and I um, am here with. MA, and we're both from the Energy Committee of Deerfield. I'm the chair, and MA has returned. She's the one who knows everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we're here tonight with Sean and Mark, uh, who have come forward with a proposal that we find very attractive. And I believe each of you has gotten a pitch from us before. Um, regarding a plan for a solar or a, yeah, solar development advisor at the town landfill space, not, mm -hmm. not the current transfer station, but that area where we own almost 40, the town owns approximately 40 acres in three different lots. And the potential for solar development is really good there, and it can't be developed for much else because of contaminants under it. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there are issues about that you have raised about um, what can be done on top of the landfill and the, sol and the cap on the landfill. But um, I, before I... I, I think those things can be addressed, and um, in general, we're here tonight, I think, to uh, try to get some action from the town that can help us get in line for solar development with the utility companies who need to, um, they have a kind of a quota on how many solar arrays they can approve per year. And it's getting late in the year, and we're, we need to get in line. So um, I'm going to let Sean, I guess, or Mark, whoever wants to start, uh, tell you what this is about from their point of view, because I've tried to represent what they're saying, but um, uh, they'll do it better. No, David, you covered good key points there. I'll just, we'll just introduce ourselves real quickly, and then I'm going to give you the broad sweep. So my name is Sean O'Neill, um, and uh, I live in Charlemont down the road. Uh, I've got 20 years in the energy and sustainability business. Um, and uh, Mike? Yeah. I'm uh, Michael Cucciara. I'm also from the West County up in Heath. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's totally fine. Um, He's not Mark. Okay. <laughs> I look like a Mark. He's got a um, <laughs> Um, I, I'm an attorney uh, by training, and I've uh, had about 15 years in the economic development, municipal finance, and affordable housing industry, and that's generally where I work. Uh, we have two projects. My firm, the Grantham Group, we have two projects in the area, one in Belchertown and one in Northampton that's affordable housing, and uh, this is sort of, I'm Sean's partner on this particular sort of project. Okay. So he brings the legal and the muni finance background, and I bring the energy and the energy finance background. So I'm just going to give you the broad sweep, and please interrupt or whatever. Let's have an exchange. But okay. um, So there's a standard approach to solar development. The standard approach is 
a developer comes to a landowner and they say, we're going to sign a development agreement with you and um, we're going to uh, pay you a certain amount of rent. Um, and, and in exchange for that, you're going to give us the rights to develop solar. And when they finish all of their permits and approvals, they may or may not build the project. They can sell the project when it's permitted or they can sell it when it's built. Um, but they make a delta between what it costs them, sorry, what, it, what uh, the project costs to build and what it's worth to the marketplace. And that's what the developer fee is. And those fees, depending on the rates they're getting paid and other things, those fees can be very high. Um, and at the end of the day, the town or the host property may not make, they, they've got a fair amount of administrative hassle and trouble, and they may get 15 or 20 or 30 grand a year um, in a pilot payment or a rent. There's another way to do this. Um, and the reason I'm here is because MA learned about a project I've been doing with a nonprofit in Greenfield. And it's a nonprofit that, um, you know, does a food justice work and they, they're a farm and they need uh, additional revenue to keep doing what they're doing. And so, uh, and they have the opportunity to do solar. And so the idea was, let's do this in a way where we're essentially co-developing. We're partnering with you. I'm your advisor, we're your advisor. We um, help you get this project permitted and we negotiate with the buyer for a better optimal rent and we split the fees with you so that you're left not with um, you know, a 15 or 20 grand a year, which may or may not have been worth your time in working on this project, but you are left with a, a little bit of an endowment type of thing. Um, so that's the approach we're taking, um, and uh, so it's really more of a partnership with, with a community, and I think of it as co-development with you, because you're going to spend time, you're already spending time on this project. Um, and uh, so um, the broad sweep of the, agree of the agreement that we're looking at with you and that's before you, is, you know, to kind of tinker with or, or think about is we put up the time and the money to develop the, the landfill site. Um, the state, the interesting thing about landfills is, you know, I know the DEP has to make some approvals and stuff, but state policy already favors using landfills for just that sort of thing. In fact, they pay you more in terms of the pennies per kilowatt that you get for your energy if you build them on a landfill. They want you to use landfills for that. So there, while there may be some remediation that we need to do or some things we need to fix, there may be sections of those 40 acres that are just fine. And this would be most likely ground mount, which means it's just a panel sitting on the ground. They don't really penetrate the, the, the earth that much, depending on how you design them. Some of them you can just roll out with a, they're in, a, in a form that's where they're ballasted and they're held down by blocks. So it's, we're not talking about a lot of site damage um, or worry about penetrating your cap, I think. Uh, our, I think our, it's about seven pounds a square inch is what, is what it can hold what it's rated for. Okay, so, so we'd have to figure out exactly yeah, how that affects. Yeah, you'd have to figure affects. out something that would mm -hmm. allow that. Mm -hmm. Square inch or square, square foot? foot. Square oh, foot. square foot? Oh, yeah. 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 I think, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but I know we, we <laughs> had some issues. Yeah, I know. Sorry. It's okay. Um, we had some issues with, um, um, you know, having to use, we were, like, allowing um, hay baling, and you, we couldn't use it. Couldn't hold heavy. up the machinery. Yeah. You yeah, can use yeah. the heavier machinery. It has to go back to a lawn. So we may need to take a good hard look at that. We're working with a, uh, a engineering firm that's done about 100 megawatts on landfills. So they've, they've encountered just about every, you know, m most of the issues you're going to, I think, run into on some of these things. So okay. we would, believe me, we wouldn't go too, too far down the road right. without knowing that we can do it because it's going to be our, right. our capital. And, and I... I I mean, I would. Uh, I really love the idea of doing this. Mm -hmm. We tried to do this a couple different times, mm -hmm. and honestly, um, as I told both Ma and David, uh, uh, what killed the deals was just the tens of thousands of dollars to hook up with. At the time, it wasn't EverSource; it was Western Mass, but Electric. But it was this, you know electric company. They were going to charge us, I don't know, a uh, hundred and something thousand dollars to hook up. So any money that we would have made for a few years off the landfill, we would have had to front. And it was like, really? That's not really worth it, you know? Well, here's, here's the difference is um, you could self-develop this, right? Mm -hmm. And I know you did that with your water treatment plant. 
but there's a lot of de demand. That was not so good a deal either. I know. <laughs> well, um, I'm suggesting there is. this is okay. another way to do this. There's a lot of demand to invest in these projects from, and, and this is not all like, you know, you know, Wall Street, um, it's, it's um, with traditional Wall Street, it might be huge pension funds and stuff that want to buy these projects. So um, there's, there's huge demand to buy solar. And so here, it's, it's folks like us who put up the earnest money to get connected. And then it's the investor who comes in and builds it. And you generate rent and pilot payments. But the, the difference we're suggesting here is that we would also share the development fee. So we'd give you half the fee. So your risk essentially is zero. The only part of the risk we're asking you to bear is because we're putting up the earnest money, we would, if, if for whatever reason the committee of the town says we don't want to do the project, that's risk we, can't, we don't want to be exposed to because it's ultimately your, we're co-developing with you. And so we want some assurances that, hey, if we design this according to your regs and your standards <laughs> that are clearly outlined in your, you know, I've read your, mm -hmm. your code, it's quite clear. If we follow those, we want to know that we can build. Um, and if, we, if for whatever reason you say no, we would like to be reimbursed for, the, for what we've put out. That's really the only thing that we've asked for. Other than that, we're not asking the town to put out a penny. And, and, and we, wouldn't let, we wouldn't go too far down the road of expenditure so that right. there is that substantial financial liability hanging out there over the town without your prior consent to that. Visiting those everybody. Yeah. Visiting well, those. Yes. Question that, oh, I'm interrupting. That's okay, <laughs> oh. go ahead. If we were going with anybody else, there would be a similar kind of thing, correct? Um, there so would be a breakup fee, a substantial breakup fee, I think, that you'd see in any of those types of deals. Uh, additionally, they most likely would not be giving away the developer fee. No, they don't. <laughs> no, 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 no one does that. I, I'm not talking about the whole, I, I want to get back to that, but I mean, we'd be liable if we said, here you go develop and then said no, no matter right. who we were dealing with. Right. What are the reasons why we would say no? I mean, what, what have, in your experience in your different projects, are there, are there areas that we would, you, I know that's a risk for you, you're worried that select board or town government would say no to this. What, what are areas where they have said no? Well, I, I can't think of any off the top of my head specifically, but I can only sort of analogize it to mm -hmm. other instances where you might be pursuing, say, a you know, new fire station project and you've solicited a developer to kind of come in and do a sort of a leaseback transaction where you're gonna, he's going to gotcha. do a lot of design work yep. and then all of a sudden some of the neighbors come together and sort of for aesthetic reasons or whatever say, I don't, we don't want a fire station here. Uh, we, you know, we want it over, over on the other side of town or something like that. And suddenly it was politically unpalatable to build a station there. Gotcha. That would be the kind of scenario that we'd anticipate. So it would be a, yeah. You know gotcha. better than us what, what the hot button issues are for Deerfield. Um, but yes. I live in Charlemont and, you know, people come out in opposition to, um, you know, certain kinds of broadband approaches because of um, signals in the air and things like that, or signals on the wires on the ground. And, and there may be perfectly good reasons. It's just everybody's got, there may be any number of issues that derail a project. Um, with that being said, I mean, we're, the planning board is now going through a, a solar permitting thing and, and that exact subject has come forward. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that it's going to stop it by any means, uh, but <clears throat> so what you're saying is that you're, you want to partner with the town and you're willing to spend all the money, but if anything related with the community makes it go south, you want the town to reimburse you for it. Yes. That's... Um, now, what we, what we would do is, before we get too far down the road of expenditure, is visit, I mean, the Energy Committee I've, sure. I've visited with two or three times already, right. and they're well apprised, but you've got your planning board, um, and there may be other committees. Um, I don't think the CONSCOM would come in here because they're not worried about preserving landfills. Um, True. But, it's already degraded. Uh, so, but, but we would do those visits um, to time. make sure that there's not Opposition. Opposition and really get a sense of the room to know how exposed we're getting. Well, um, the only thing we're trying to protect here is that we don't, um, we, we're ready to manage the risk around the utility. We're ready to manage the risk around, you know, uh, the, the solar program that we have to work with. Um, we're even ready to tackle some of the DEP issues and try to figure out exactly where we can build and stuff like that and, 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 and at least assess the cost of what might need to be done to the cap. 
but the, a variable that we're less accustomed with and harder to control is what if the town says, hey, you know, we've gotten the endorsement from various pieces of the town, but what if one committee says, hey, we really don't want well, this? Well, I think the real issue is, 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 is not so much whether or not, you know, a planning board acting in its legitimate legal capacity to turn down a project. It, that, that's not the scenario we're talking about. We're talking more about the scenario of the, suddenly solar is politically unpalatable in Deerfield and this uh, select board reverses itself, and now we're in a different type of a position. So that would be the financial liability factor. And that's, that's really, and again, like we said, we, when we approach this project, we're approaching it as partners, and all of these expenses we plan to, we anticipate running by. And documenting. Time, and documenting you. ahead of time. So that you're not in a position where, oh, hey, you know, we're you know, a year down the road and there's no project and we're looking for a breakup fee. But I, I, David gave me, I don't know what you want to call it, a contract or agreement, whatever, mm -hmm. and I reviewed it. So, and you folks are basically just going to go through all the permitting thing. Once it's permitted, ready to go, that's where you stop. And you're going to try to market this to some investment group. That's right. To come in and buy it from right. you. And build it. And then you're saying that you're going to subtract your expenses from what they pay you and then split the difference with the town. That, that's exactly right. And mm -hmm. we have no idea what that amount will be or what your expenses will be. I can give you sort of industry averages. I don't, I'd rather not recite them now, but as a follow-up, sure. I can, I can cause I'm not even sure I have them on the top of my head. But um, we wouldn't go down this road so to get reimbursed for expenses, and we're not billing for our time. Um, so, you know, we're only doing this because we know the business and we know what the market looks like. We can give you kind of rules of thumb for what um, what standard rent and pilot payments have been. We can give you rules of thumb for what the development fee looks like on a per megawatt basis. Those things are all known. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see the same averages we're dealing with as well as the same risks. And so I, I'll put that in front of you, no problem. Okay. David? Um, because Sean's come and talked to us, I, uh, what I found interesting about his proposal is that, you know, he, He's putting up money to take out the early risk. And right. He's putting up 50 to, and it, or he's found people willing to, willing, willing to put up that much money. Um, and what we get is a kind of transparency that the other companies don't offer. And this is, this is a little more subtle, but when we contract with someone who just says we want to rent your landfill or whatever, or lease it, we don't hear about the development fee at all. I mean, we don't know that they're going to sell that right to another company. And that's why we keep chasing the names of these companies. They just keep, you know, becoming other entities. And we don't get it. I mean, I don't. I can't follow it. But in this case, we know that Sean's likely to set up an LLC, a limited liability company that will hold the rights to develop this landfill for a solar array and that that LLC is going to get sold. And that sale earns a fee that other towns never see. And you'll be privy to all of it. Right. Uh, have I got that right? You've got that's that correct. Right. And there's a couple different hooks that the town will have into the, the project. Um, they'll be at the fir with the LLC at the LLC level. Um, firstly, would be a ground lease negotiated between the town and the LLC, covering that, uh, as well as on just throughout the entire process, it'll be fully transparent and open to you. We'll be able to reflect, report back what we're hearing from the market. We'll be going out actually talking to investors and seeing where we are positioned. So you're going to be getting that information. So what, what I was started all that to say is that he's getting paid from money other towns never even see. That's correct. And then we get to split the difference on what's left over. But it can be as much as, you know, I'm assuming it's a high end, but a million dollars. Um, or more. It's not nothing. Right. So, <laughs> and so we'd be splitting probably, I assume you'd get your 100000 back. You'd pay a profit to the people who'd invested early mm -hmm. to put up the risk. 
pay their interest or whatever you call it on their investment, you pay your expenses, but that leaves, who knows, 800,000 anyway to split. That, that would never be split with in another, any other, any other private developer. Depending on how much power we build, you could be at the very low end, the numbers you get. Yeah. The other thing is yeah. that when we're negotiating the rental payment, typically when a, um, a developer comes to a landowner, they're trying to negotiate. They know what that number is that they want to get to, and they might be lowballing the landowner, and they know that there is this additional pilot payment out there. But, you know, so we'll be playing with that. So we're going to try to negotiate the highest level of acceptable, highest level of rent for the property that we're then be selling down the line. So you'll be getting some upside there as well that you typically are not seeing because that impacts the net present value and the internal rate of return that the investor uh, who's subsequently buying this from the developer typically will be um, willing to give up, so to speak. The higher the rent, the lower the developer fee because it's either are you paying it over up front or, or over time. And so one of the things we want to be able to do with you is ha essentially keep, have you privy to the negotiation and see, all right, how do we want to take these funds? The other thing that I would add to that, which for me is really um, also valuable, is that we have two, two people here who will be devoting their time to this project mm. where we've always had, you know, me, you, somebody else, a little bit of time, no knowledge, no experience. Um, no no for, point person. <laughs> for me, having these two gentlemen mm -hmm. working on our behalf is incredibly valuable. Yep. That may be the best part of the deal. <laughs> <laughs> it I mean, usually they, is. They know how to negotiate. They have the same incentives. <laughs> the better they do, the better we do. Um, Given our experience at the sewer treatment yes. plant, I would it's say that's a huge value. That, but yeah. yeah. We live around here, so we're going to be seeing you probably yeah. out and about. We can't screw it up. <laughs> and I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, um, you'd like this model to work because you'd like to have it to use it again. Yeah. Correct. So I mean, I'll give you an another example. reason that, it, you know, they're going to be doing their very best to help us out because if this project is a success, then they can go to other towns and say, we've got a new model. Look what it did for Deerfield. You may want to, you know, talk to us. So. I, I guess the question that I have, and I've had ever since I read that, mm -hmm. is with your experience in the energy field as an attorney, um, there are multiple opportunities to do this in a lot of different locations. Why would you spend your time and money investing to grow a business that is, we're going to estimate, worth a million dollars, then say to us, we'll split it with you? Uh, be, for a couple of reasons. I mean, it started with a nonprofit that I wanted per, to see have some resources. Um, the fees right now, the developer fees are outsized relative to, um, to frankly, the value that the developers are providing. So um, you don't need us. If you just want to develop the landfill, you don't need us. And we wouldn't be sitting here. Um, you could go to, there are much bigger developers out there, really, uh, you know, first class solar developers, and they would earn the whole fee, and you would get, I'm sure they would deliver, they'd do a good job. Um, why are we doing it? We can earn perfectly reasonable fees at half the fees that, that these other guys would get and get in the room with you. Um, it's, it's, I think it's that simple. It's called altruism. <laughs> Sorry? I, think in, I said it's called altruism. Well, <laughs> well no, it's not, because it's not like we're giving everything away. Right. There is a project that I'm working on for a fairground, right. and I'm going to give most of the fee away because I, I care about fairs, and fa our, fa our local fairs are suffering because yeah. a lot of the people who run them are aging out, and they need resources to keep going, and I'm going to a convention, a fair convention, which would be fun, <laughs> to talk about how fairgrounds can benefit from solar, and they can because they got Sorry. lots of barns and rooftops, um, and that's not going to be a lucrative business. It's just something I care about. But no, we're not. Altruism is very. I uh, love love to you know, think half, of, think half that. Half that but we're 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 going to earn a <laughs> fee right. and a fine fee, but there's a plan to go around. They're so, the the Harry's razors. <laughs> the the <laughs> right. razors are overpriced. Harry's exactly. comes in and says, "Wait, I can do it lower." It's that. Yeah. So it what do you need from us? Man. 
to um, have us go forward. Well, with so you. I'd like to talk a little bit about the. There's a, a certain level of urgency in moving this forward. The program is oversubscribed. It's very competitive. One thing that we have going in. Um, and another reason why probably we're here in Deerfield is because of the specific type of project that it is. It sits on a landfill. That's a priority project in the eyes of the state. That's a priority. They want to see those projects move forward. That's under the current program. The program, as I said, very oversubscribed, and so we need to get in the queue as soon as possible in order to move that forward. So we would hope to be able to sit down and have this, uh, this development service agreement enter into an agreement with you so that we could feel comfortable moving forward with spending money out of pocket to go take that next step on behalf of the town. To we have to spend money just to get in the queue. Okay, right? so mm -hmm. one of the things I would suggest, the first thing is to just verify what the weight load is because I, I got a text we'll from my um, highway superintendent and it, it is seven pounds per square inch, not a foot. So is what seven he said. A That's a lot more. Uh, a lot seven pounds a foot is nice. not much at all. That's right. like your your yeah. uh, roof is designed for thirty pounds a square foot snow load. So yeah, your cap on maybe your... maybe. <laughs> so it's it's seven. Yeah, seven uh, pounds he pounds said per seven inch. pounds per square inch. So That's, I don't. I good, you know yeah, that, that is, needs to be verified good, yeah. because. So when, so what I propose, and I think I mentioned this to Diana, is is. Um, our engineers are eager to look at the closing report because when they, whenever they closed it, they did you know a whole bunch of documentation. They would have had the calculation. So we're interested in the engineering design that was done for the cap and the closing report, and from that, and then of course anything that's arisen later because you know it sounds like there's been right. a few so, problems. Um, check that out because like I said, there was some hassle. I don't. It was like oh, five years ago or eight years ago with the the hay baling thing. So. Um, Check that out. That would be the weight thing. We um, will do that as a first order of yep. business. Yep. Um, I'm definitely interested. Are you all interested? Well, good. Wendy has a couple of questions. Well, uh, Kip looks like he was ready oh, to say something. Um, I'm just using my calculator. <laughs> it's nice to meet you, and and I, you know, I've met you before, and it's nice to hear the whole thing. And thank you all for the work. Um, I'm, I'm. It, it's exciting that it's as um, local, and I understand the work that you do and, and with other projects. Just to clarify, just to say this, my understanding is the first time you're going to do this kind of a project, correct? Yes, I've designed, I've been involved in the development and permitting of power facilities, cogeneration facilities, which is a, a plant. But this that, kind of arrangement is it? Under the current program, yes, it's true. Okay. Well, I have, I'm under contract to do this for the nonprofit. And it's not done yet, okay. but we're in the process. Okay, but just so saying this is a pilot project. It's a pilot project. I would... Uh, in my view, that doesn't make it necessarily risky because I, yeah, I know. I we're, just we're still going to put out the money for the same process right. any other developer would, mm -hmm. um, and those things are the the results of those will be yours. Mm -hmm. you know. what so is, the second, let me just I'll just ahead. finish. And um, the the question that we still have not complete resolution about mm -hmm. um, is whether we need to actually do a procurement process for this, I and can't that, which yeah. would be challenging because. There's never been something like this done. Not to say we couldn't do it, but that wouldn't ensure. I don't, I don't understand why we can do an RFP that we're, or an RFR. Because well, then that will slow things yeah. down and all of that. We'd have to, you know, we'd have to figure out how to write it up and all that. This is something different. But that's that's, yeah, that's the true. You know, it's not saying it won't, it can't be done. It's just saying we'd have to do it. Or it's likely we would have to do that. Yeah. We, well, I mean, if it. And I'm not too familiar with this area of procurement law. Uh, I mean, because it is such a de novo concept within the mm -hmm. state. Um, you know, if if there was an RFQ or some 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 process like that, I mean, it is the timeline that is concerning. Right. What's the outside date on that? I guess we just like want to say if, <sighs> if tomorrow you were able to drop one on the street into the state uh, registry, uh, registry, was it 30 days or something like that? Like, what's the minimum? Approval time because it's I, I I'm the, the fairly... real question is the well, what you're telling me you want tomorrow, <laughs> oh. which is having it ready to go tomorrow. You know, then it's three weeks or so. You know, you got to have a two weeks notice and right. postings and all of that. It's really the developing of the of, the, of that yes. um, yeah. and and you know, to, given that it's something new, I don't know you know how we get uh, around it not being too proprietary. I mean, how do you not do that if it's this, you're well, the only ones who do it? So we, we no, can talk not. about that. I'm just raising that as 
figuring that out. That's something that has to be figured when out. Totally that, agree. When does the registry, uh, what's the timeline that, on the registry? It's, I just said, two weeks. But it's okay. really the crafting of the, the RFP the itself short. that's the challenge here. So if I could make and, a couple of quick add-ons sure. to that. One is um, there's nothing in this that's proprietary. And if we're driving the solar companies to give, sh give a better shake, awesome, you know, that, that wouldn't, be, wouldn't be the worst outcome. We'd love to do this with you. Um, there may be folks that, that still want to do this. Um, uh, I would argue that, um, and I don't know enough about procurement law, but we're not, the, the town's not paying us anything. We're just performing a service to prepare a site for, for disposition or for, for lease anyway. Um, and, um, and, and sharing fees, and there's some attorneys going to know far better. Um, so I think you're 100% right on. And, and if they say that we can go forward as is, great. And if not, um, I think the raw material in the development agreement and the raw material from <laughs> scoping documents that I've shared probably give you much of what you need to put an RFP out. Um, slap some boilerplate on it, but I think a lot of the raw material, it's not proprietary. I mean, I, you can't even, you couldn't copyright it, I think, if you wanted to. So. By all means, if, you th if there's folks willing to do this, um, you know, we, okay. we, that's fine. Yeah. I, I, I don't know that you'll find you know, solar developers banging down your door to share the, <laughs> split the fee. <laughs> so we, we, might get we're not, we're not, we might get hate mail. We're not right. threatened by a, in our a procurement process. It's, our concern is just merely a timeline right. and ensuring that we're able to get into that mm -hmm. queue as urgently as possible. What, what is your... Esti best estimate as to what your costs will be to see this through. So um, there's two kind of two elements to that answer. One, as Mike was pointing out, is we would limit the exposure at the upfront. So um, before, I don't think we'd spend more than the 20 or so thousand, 25,000 it might take to put it into the queue. Um, you know, if you if we kind of got the go ahead, we would probably do that pretty quickly, possibly even adva in advance of visiting with with every committee in town that we need to visit, um, but preferably not. I would rather visit with the planning board and everything, um, but that's so urgent to get in the queue. It's just such a, uh, you know, getting in the, in, in the process with the utility is so important that we would want to jump at that. I get that, but I think that $20,000 would be kind of shy as considering what the planning board's going to want, uh, you know, so, oh, so for documentation, just, engineering, and things. Absolutely. Like that. So let me. Uh, all I'm talking about is the utility fee, just to get in the utility queue. So, um, but we wouldn't spend more until we had a really clear idea what what the concerns from the planning board or any other committees were. Um, what the planning board needs is very clearly outlined in your regs. You know, right. it's uh, site civil, it's wetlands analysis. Um, one of the you know, basic things, for example, that would actually not be provided by us but would be provided by the buyer of the project is a surety against decommissioning. So after 30 years, it's in your regs. After 30 years, they have to post a, a, a surety that says they are able to take down those panels and get rid of them. Um, and so those kinds of things are very clear in your regs. Uh, by the time we're done, it could be $100,000 that we're, that we're out. But we're going to measure, measure it out based upon a sense of the room well, uh, with you that. and with them. Uh, right, but I think the sense of the boards uh, could vary and the scenario that you laid out earlier about public opinion, you know, and, and I feel, you know, as being a business person, I'm, I'm intrigued by it, but also as a steward of the ta taxpayer's dollars, I'm leery of it. So, you know, I, I just think that we need to, you know, well, think we're about not it. risking anything. Well, we are. Because if they spend $100,000 and for whatever reason it fails, we've got to... Only if no, it fails only if within committee. We, only if we it, fail it. Only you know, if suddenly... If only within your... No. Only if it's one right. of the but town if, entities. If it does, if, say it doesn't pass the planning board yes. for whatever reason, then we would have to reimburse oh. them. Can I, can I qualify that sure, actually sure. further? If it doesn't pass the planning board because we don't meet your regs, that's our failure. And that's not... The, if it... But what, they, what I'm suggesting is if the planning board has reasons that are outside the very clear regs, you know, the regs even, they have things like setbacks and other things, you know, you can't, oh, some of them, I forget whether yours, but a lot of towns say you can't use herbicide to keep the weeds down, right. and stuff like that. Okay. If, we, if we have to follow your regs, the planning, what we would need and what we don't want to be exposed to is a, is a concern outside the regs about the project. So typically as a developer coming in and 
the planning board turns them down, turns down that developer for what you know, uh, for purportedly, you know, failing to adhere to the regulations of the, the established by the planning board. He would sue the town. He would sue the planning board and then move through that process. Well, this agreement does not contemplate ever that kind of process unfolding because we would be, you know, in violation. In violation of our of our agreement. We have to meet your regs. It's just if they cut, if there's some other thing where they say, oh, we don't like the angle of the panel. Well, there's nothing in the in the regs about the angle of the panel. Right. I'm, I'm just making that up. I know. And in, in our, I'm not sure how to word this. In, try. Okay, I'll try. In the special permit language for the solar things, there are things. Uh, there's language to. Does it fit the character of the neighborhood and things like that? Um, that's a very discretionary thing. That's a very good point. And if we fill this room with 400 people that say solar panels are the ugliest things I've ever saw, beneficial to the environment, I get it, but I don't want to look at it. You know, those are things that, and so now we've got the, you know, those are things that, you know, I, I can't wrap my head around, but those are things that seem to happen here. But you said you would take a temperature of the town and we want to get in front of them very early on issues exactly like that. Yeah. And, and it's going to be all site specific, right? Because yeah. I know you've got another project in town and there are concerns about it. Yep. This is on your landfill. Right. I, I, it's not a site that's, you know, that right. I imagine being controversial. There are abutters there, but it's also been a landfill. They're a lot better off than they were, whatever, 10 years ago, 15 years ago when you closed it. Right. So, yep. um, you know, we, we definitely, I mean, what you're concerned about is very much our concern too, because. Sure. The money that we that the town might have to come up with if we fail um, on at the committee level is going to be at least equaled by our time and effort um, in this in this right. process. We're going to be spending a huge amount of time trying to make everybody at the planning board happy. Um, okay, that's what I was thinking. So, thank you. What do do you want us just to make a vote, vote or you want a consensus, or I don't know what your process is, but what what. What we'd like to do, first of all, is come back to you immediately on the weight-bearing issue. Yeah. Um, and, and, we, and that answer will be, you know, there, either we've got something that will cost some money to the project, uh, or it's infeasible, or we're fine. It'll be one okay. of those, probably one of those three things. Um, and then um, an, an understanding we would like to know from you um, whether our agreement works right so I think um, what we were thinking about was obviously you have a procurement question to answer from town oh, there's that. so you have a procurement question to answer from town council and we're gonna have Lisa look at this and then also have town council review the agreement if if you know if it passes a then B would be to and look and enter into that agreement if you were willing to consider you know qualifying tonight some sort of feeling of the board, I mean, we'd certainly take that into consideration. I would suggest, unless you have, I was going to suggest that, you know, if you did want to go forward, if you did, mm -hmm. um, that it be, um, what did you just say was the word? Qualify. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Contingent upon a council uh, um, review of the documents, which she mm -hmm. has seen and has given us a preliminary uh, bid, you know, RFQ, RFQ, process advice um, have her look at it more carefully she was going to give us something more about that um, look at um, you're going to be talking with our DPW superintendent mm -hmm. about the yes so yeah. contingent on these other things and what was the third one you were thinking of? oh the you know whether we could procure, procure it sole source yeah. or not or sole source but source the rest procure. is a business decision of the board you know I, I mean your it's your decision well, I'm, I'm, supportive, I'm supportive of it, so I don't mind making I, I'm a in, contingent. I'm in favor uh, of it, too, as long as, you know, again, we, we go through this we legal through, stuff. We they talk with DPW. Out, yeah, we've got some stuff I mean, to work on, I mean, we've been trying obviously. to do this for years. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I mean, mean, I love solar, and we but, can put it on the But landfill. we got so burned, and, and it, it just wasn't every company that we've come, there was always a catch, and, and it just wasn't a good thing. Right. And then the one time that we did do something on a small scale, it was. Well, that, that's, 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 that's very know. different. That's yeah. apples and oranges. Substantial. Well, but, but on, on the I other know it's hand, grand. I mean, yeah. the the various variables 
in contracts for even a rent agreement are beyond me. I, I mean, there's, there's, are you going to be 15 percent lower than utility, and what do you do if it's the different utility gets taken? I know, taken and over, that's you know, why I, I you know, no, know nothing stuff. seemed to have really panned out to make it worthwhile. I like yeah. the idea of having a partner. Who yes, does have some knowledge. And in I this think it's area, also but. really, really important that we have a point person. So, if as a partner, you're the point person on the project. Absolutely. That makes me feel much better because none of us have the time or the expertise. I mean, that, that really was what the, one of the issues are. Everyone kept passing around, and it's like, okay, it's my turn. I'm going to go show up. And, you know, everybody had a different, you know, opinion on what was installed and what the problem was and all kinds of stuff. So, I mean, it just... I don't we really can, know we that can much. have it all vetted in all these yeah. ways and yeah. uh, Meet again. with the uh, superintendent oh, and the mm -hmm. council and all of that and bring it back in two weeks yeah. and you can think about That'd it. That'd be perfect. And, two and, and have it two weeks because they meet every other week. Is it possible? Is there a planning board meeting anywhere in that in terms? Does anybody know off the top of their head? Um, I think it's one a, Monday. Yeah, yeah right. there's, no. there's one Monday. What the, yeah, but we're, the, the agenda is quite full. But yeah. you're more than welcome to come and see. Uh, because if somebody there is, out. There, is, there are other we'll businesses <laughs> that are going to be in for and public then debate and, then and they're another in project similar. So, yeah. Do, you, do you go I to those meetings? Unfortunately, With all I your do. extra time? He's on the, <laughs> he's on the planning board. <laughs> well, good. I get all the abuse. Good. Well, I mean, you'll have a better sense of the room than we will. So, um, no, don't ask me that. <laughs> one suggestion? I mean, I think we're sort of done with the big discussion. We're, we're pretty clear on yeah. that. My suggestion in the in this document, it has um, it, it refers to the planning, uh, the uh, energy committee doing this, and the selectmen doing that, and 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 sort of a variety of responsibilities sort of shared out in somewhat of a random way. It was a guess. I know that's sure. what I figured. What what I would like to propose because because this is a big undertaking for the town, and it's a fairly big responsibility. I would suggest that we set up a committee that has a select person on it, somebody from your office, some people from the energy committee, maybe other people, but a, a permanent, not a permanent, a, a temporary committee um, that oversees this process so that the same people are getting the same information and, and not that one person sense. knows this and somebody else knows this in town. So that, that would be my only recommendation as far as this contract mm -hmm. goes. I just think it would be a... a a much uh, better way of just handling it's good for this. us too because then we're only reporting one obviously yeah, obviously right. you and would you yeah forward it on that, yeah. that committee they well, you have an advocate yeah. that would it knows so what's going however on however you all want that committee to be made up it's fine you know but but i just think exactly. we ought to have you know four or five people mm -hmm. who know this project all the way through yeah good no it's a good idea Good idea. Great. Great. Thank you. All so right. we, Thank you very much. We know much. what our yep. next task is, and we'll just yep. circle back. Should we'll our yeah. Diana, should we come to you? And we'll get cards. Okay. Thank Great. Thanks. Great. Thank you, right. for, Thank coming. you for coming. Thank you for coming. Very right. nice Thank to you. Thank you. Thanks, David. Thank Thanks, David. Thank you, M.A. Good suggestion, M.A. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, M.A. Someone from our office. Thank you, David. <laughs> I yeah, <laughs> seven forty-five. We're late. We're a little late. Our next hearing, Gail Bover. TNM Auto Corporation. Welcome. Hi. How, how are, are you? you? Good. Good. <laughs> Not coming. <laughs> uh, I'm Carla Kazenzi Zayak. This is my brother Tommy Kazenzi, and we're here because we're looking for a dealer license at what is currently Pioneer Volvo um, at 253 Greenfield Road, um, and we're looking to change the name to Volvo Cars Pioneer Valley. Okay. Great. Have you filled out an application and everything? Yeah, yes, yes. Yep. 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 Including some email be. correspondence. <laughs> so you're not with Gail. Gail. No, she's right oh, here. that's Gail. Hi, Gail. Um, Hi, Gail. So your plans to take over the Volvo dealership? Yes. Continue selling Volvo? Yes. And servicing? Yes. Volvo and Saab. It's the Volvo. Oh, that's because he wants Oh, What's see? That? Yeah. That's because well, you have one. <laughs> well, yeah. We'll take good care of you. Thank you. Um, um, I was curious what was going to happen with it. So, so you're, Carly, you're the president, secre secretary, and treasurer? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, to okay. say the least. And this is my brother. Um, we're partners. Good to meet you. 
Um, is there any changes that I you're anticipating um, that we uh, you want to bring to our attention? Nope. We plan to just continue business as usual. Okay. It's a standard any, application. Yeah, any other no. brand of car or just, just nope. Volvo? Nope, just Saab. Volvo Saab, yep. Yeah. Um, it looks it looks like everything is in order. Yeah, it looks good to me. Um, I make a motion you, we approve this. As did, uh, real quick, do, oh, oh, just curious if you had already purchased or if that's coming up or. Um, so yes, we've entered into a purchase agreement with them, yeah. um, an asset purchase agreement. Our closing date is the slated for the 29th. Wonderful. Right. It's right. So this month. So I yes. Do have yes. <laughs> they can file it. Yep. Our plan is to be open on uh, the first, Great. September first. Great. Great. Thank you. Carolyn made a motion to approve it. I uh, second that motion. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you very much. We look nice forward to being partners in the community. Yeah. And well, thank you very much for coming in. fee the town charges for this. Yeah. I have a okay. document. Well, I'll yeah. sign okay. everything at the we end of the meeting. Okay. Once it's complete, we'll, we'll actually have a license. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank right. you. Thank, thank you. We'll see you soon. Yep. yep. Thank you. <laughs> Looks like everything is okay. Yeah. Same part. Wendy, do you oh. want to give us your report? Oh, just, yeah, it's the whole meeting. <laughs> so, um, we're, uh, tomorrow at noon is when the bids are due for the police station roof, and okay. uh, I'll let you know what happens. Um, just a reminder, we have our, our continued executive session hearing on Monday. I think it's 7, but I'll check on that. Okay. Um, also, the uh, scoreboard. You know about the scoreboard? I've heard about yeah, it. Yeah, we're going to have it. it um, we may have to procure that also. I'm working with council on that because it's a lease of land. Um, it's our land and it's, you know, at any rate, I'm trying to get through that as well. I there. know, I know. <laughs> um, so the, it's like a cell tower it, that but comes But they're not going like to give it to us. No. Okay. But we'll see how that can happen and what's the best way to make it happen for the town. Well, they could put it on the side of a hay wagon, I guess. It's not temporary. <laughs> Okay. Also, I did hear, I'm sorry, I heard from um, Mr. Warner again. Yes. Yes, I, and I replied back to you. Did you get my email on that? Uh, maybe, I think you were going to maybe have something, we would maybe, if we were going to entertain something, we'd do it on the 9th, or the 5th. Okay. Yeah. And then, if, if you want to do it again. Have we, we, uh, I've never felt we've had a real a discussion. discussion. Yeah. No, that's what I was hoping to generate and either make a decision and move on or not. Yeah. Well, so. I mean, we and need it's not on the agenda tonight, so we could I know, we could but well, it's, a, it's old business that you've been. Right. Oh, okay. Well, I, I, I mean, in my mind, what, I, I don't know. Just to be difference. clear for people who are listening, this is about yes. the tower on uh, Pine Nook. Uh, no, uh, Comtic Ridge. The Comtic Ridge. Oh. So there's. Pine Nook is in the middle of the south of North Oh, gee. Meadows. No one's corrected me before. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I stand. Um, I sit corrected. As I, <laughs> okay. um. <clears throat> so the, the the idea is that um, Delta Sand and Gravel own a tower that's on the edge of the cliff now. It's due. It's old, so it's due to be replaced. Um, um, they can just take down the building. You know, take down the tower that's there and put up a new one. Probably a little bit more specification changes because it's a new structure. Uh, might be a pole tower, that kind of thing, instead of the structure that's there. Um, and they had thought, well, since we have to do this anyways, they thought maybe if the town was interested um, that they would purchase um, a small chunk of land behind the property they own now and just to be able to move the tower off the cliff face so you don't see it as much. Um, or, um, and, and they would just, they would do that and, and take down the other one and it would just move, move it away and that we would get a small amount of money for the land and, and that would be that. And what the benefit is is that we would get a small amount of money and we'd push the tower back from the 
from the cliff edge. Um, the, the only other option is that we choose to not do that and they just rebuild that's there. So we were hoping, uh, you know, of course we'd always, when you hear about this in many towns, that you would lease land to somebody and um, then you would get some revenue off of whatever communication items that are on there. I think we do have a tower up there with some of that already, but in this case we don't have that ability. Um, I mean, he's not interested in leasing. He doesn't need to. So the only real benefit I see is that we would get a small amount of money, which really isn't a huge benefit, but the other benefit is we'd have a little bit better view from the cliff edge and you wouldn't quite see the tower so much. You may still see it. I'm sure you would. Oh, no, it's a tower, it. but it wouldn't be right on the edge of the cliff that's there now. I have not walked up there to look at it, but I was interested to do that. Um, just haven't had the time to do that. So that's kind of the synopsis of where we're at. So I tend to be in favor of gaining a quarter of a loaf of bread than none at all, but I leave it up to you too as well. That's kind of where I'm at. But it doesn't sound like we're going to be able to lease. So. We are not. So well, he's not interested that, in that. I think, I think that was the discussion uh, from him that you know they're not interested in leasing it. Um, and my opinion is that um, there could be future development there with another tower or something, and for the ten or eleven thousand dollars the town would gain. I mean, we could get three times that amount in one year for a, a lease option if somebody came along with that. So I, you know, I just, uh, I, I, it's more than just 600 or 6,000 square feet of land in the middle of the woods, you know. And, and today, in today's world, everything is going, you know, radio waves. Um, so, I don't so, know, I, I, just, I just think, you know, we, we could, you know, we've offered him to lease the land and he said he just not interested. Um, I would, I, in my position is I think we should keep the land. So we own everything but that little chunk right now. Right. So if anybody else came up there and wanted to put up, they would have to buy, buy the land or we would just lease it. Right. That's where we would get the thing. We'll never get any money from his, from his spot. No. So, and the only benefit is really aesthetics. I don't lean one way or the other other than I would just, I would rather get a better view but maybe we wouldn't in the long run get a better view anyway. So I'm not really strong either way. I just thought it would be the time to do it if we wanted to take that benefit. And I'd be curious to hear from the public if anyone has anything to say about it and wants to. Come up I to the it. mic. I see a hand, Bruce, Bruce Hunter. FCAT keeps telling me, you gotta get Bruce Hunter to come up to the mic. And speak <laughs> into the mic. <laughs> you have to identify yourself, Bruce. I'm uh, Bruce Hunter, 103 Sand Gully Road, South Deerfield. Um, there's a process to sell land that's owned by the town. I think that ought to be considered first, and what that process is, is and what will it entail, how long will it take to uh, get town, is it town meeting approval or special town meeting approval to sell town property? I would think it would at least be town meeting. It was sure. we, I think even and we have to declare a surplus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, there one. is an advertising process mm -hmm. We have to go through, so it's not something that if yeah, you make we, a decision, it's going to happen immediately. Correct. So I think that we Warner Brothers should be looking at, we should know what the time frame is even before we consider it. If they need to do this in the next two months. They don't. We no. talked to them. They don't. They, they said in the next year or two they need to do this, and they felt like <coughs> now's the time to We know, have start, been dragging our feet because we haven't, I, I haven't felt that we've had a really good discussion on this. We were hoping um, that we could. I don't really know a lot, um, but uh, you know, <laughs> having someone else put a tower relatively close, I'm not sure there's interference and there's, you know, I mean, there. I know enough to know that you can't have them too close because then you have um, some kind of, you know, you have quality issues mm. out of the way. You I know, mean, I agree with with Kip relative to the marginal price for sale of a 6,000 square foot parcel. Yeah, it's not the uh, money on the land. Uh, it's we, aesthetics, if anything. If anything. And we don't know really what it will look like. Right, not yet. And what it will look like after it's built. Right. Right. So moving it back 25, 30 feet, it might be in their best interest to rebuild the tower that 25 or 30 feet back. Oh, I'm sure in, it is. Relative to where the existing tower is. Mm -hmm. so. 
The existing one is right on the right cliff. On the yeah. So yeah. they just they, kind of pose the question: that Are we even interested? And right. if not, they'll this, just go it, ahead. And this has been discussed for three quarters well, we, of a year. The decision we, should yeah. be made. Then. And and we've vetted these issues around procurement with council, and the board has basically said not interested. But we keep getting asked the question because it's going to be difficult for them to put the tower that they want to put up at the place that Probably. they want to put it. Yep. That's the reason. Yep. I can, if, they're, if they're saying we're procrastinating and, they need, and, and the issue is our responsibility to tell them we'll sell you the property before they do anything, I think yeah. it's, they're looking at a construction issue. Sure. Yep. So, so I, I, we can put it to bed now if you want or you can do it next, next I, time. I, I just feel you. like there's... I don't know what the really the best decision is because it, you know, it doesn't, I don't know. I mean, it's not a hugely impactful decision one way or the other, but I feel like uh, there is money there, some more than just a few thousand dollars. You mean you think you can make more money off of it later? No, I just, or you know, I, I feel like we should be leasing it rather than selling it, but. Sure, if you could. Uh, I know. I thought you had decided that, and I keep getting emails. I know. Well, I, I, well, I, I mean, I, my feeling was we should, leave, you know, we should enter some kind of a long-term lease yep. where we have some kind of income. Okay. And as a and and I I wanted. Well, I you know, think I'm sure it's not popular to write it as a percentage of their income. Well, I think you know that because if nobody knows what the technology is going to be in the next few years, so it is kind of a little bit of a gamble, but. My, my bet is if they're investing in a new structure, then they have, you know, a business plan to make more money, so. All right, I so know, then why we don't should, we just we say no, that we're not interested in selling the land and then we'll let, let it there? Because, I mean, they're not interested in leasing, they said that. So if we say no and then they only know our answer is lease, they'll come back and ask for that down the road. And then we can well, put it to bed. In the meantime, I, I thought we said that, but right. if you want to say it again. Let's say it again. Yeah. Okay. So well, I make a motion a to not sell the land to Delta Sand and Gravel for the parcel up on uh, uh, Pecumptic uh, Ridge. And enter in further discussion if they would like to lease the land. So, so moved. Okay, second. Is there any more discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I that guess you could send them one point. more email saying that we want to lease and not sell. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think it's Next. worth it. We know that answer. Do you have anything else, sir? Um, that's it for the agenda? Is that what you're saying? No, the, uh, your report of any oh, sort. Oh, yeah. Right? No, sorry. I forgot. I, right, <laughs> that, I didn't have that in the report. I just That came yeah. up because you emailed again. And you've been, it's been a, just a recurring topic. Nope. I'm, I'm good. Okay. Um, and we're on to the sewer abatements. Well, there was, um, one. I, I have one that I, that's been sitting here that I wanted to get. No, we have this. Oh, we have, I was wondering where that went. Yeah. Thank you. The one I wanted to get this a little a more clarification on, uh, this one here is, I don't know what the amount uh, used is. Is this the one on Captain Lathrop that you're talking about? No, this is here. This okay. is the one that's okay, right? Right, right. This is the other one. That, okay. that was an issue we have to address. I'm okay with I this. Know. I looked at this, and I'm okay with that one. This one here? Here are the two. And I read that one as well, and I'm fine with that, because that well, was just The process free. is that's the one to sign, so we need to keep okay. it. Um, the process is um, if there's a water meter issue, water reading issue, the sewer department lets, lets the collector's know. office know. They fill it out, and they get it to us, and it's pretty much just a... Yep. Uh, Vote. Yep. Yep. So I make a motion to approve the um, sewer use abatement for five Captain, five Captain Lathrop Drive. I'll second that. In the Any amount. further discussion? The amount? The amount is 136.24. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'll give it back. So what, so what, I'll give it back um, at the okay. end. Yeah. What did you need to That's know on this one? You were going to do a little uh, bit I more I don't, research? you know, there's no, um, this has not been filled Fair. out. So I don't know the amount. I don't know. There's obviously a Issue. first pipe. Yeah. And, and, but I, based on these, you know, I don't know what their, what their right. current usage is. I would need more. 
Okay. More data. Yeah. So, and I don't know how to get that data. So, if I didn't. Barbara, I don't know if I received that, so I haven't. Yeah, maybe. Take a look so, and see what your thoughts are, and, and okay. talk with Barbara. Um, um, it does. I mean, it's certainly out of line. Oh right, it's right. not complete. But yeah, that was the only issue, and that's why it's sad. doesn't even suggest what the abatement amount is, so I agree with Trevor. Yeah, just, yeah, have, just have them. We can be filling in the abatement right, amount. Right, have them fill it out and bring it back, and we can do it. I, I don't have an issue with it. Yeah. Request for comments from the planning board for hexagon energy solar installation. That's off of mm -hmm. right Road Route 116. Um. I didn't. Well, you you How were the at the meeting the other night. Yeah. What, can you what were the majority of the questions related? Um, can you be more specific about well, what um, questions from? Well, I mean, one of the things is when you cite cite the solar facility is you know is it going to cause any runoff issues or? I mean, that's um, always my concern is no, runoff I, issues. No, I I believe that uh, you know the project is uh, is pretty well under control that way. It's a Fairly flat parcel. Is this land. the one that they were going to use the animals to do the feeding? You know, eat I, underneath? They were going to have them a little bit higher? I didn't hear anything about that. They were, we were going to be a pilot? Didn't hear anything about animals. They're here. They're here. They, you oh, folks, oh, oh you come, come on, on up. up. Come, come on up. Come on up. Welcome. Welcome. Trekking around the borders of the site. Today That's okay. To, uh, understand site lines so, a little bit better. Thank you. Introduce um, yourself. Um, uh, yes. Good evening. Uh, Scott Raymer with Hexagon Energy. Nice to see you all again. Uh, Good to see. Uh, Daniel Bolka, Hexagon Energy as well. Oh, nice to meet thank you. Guys. you. Um, was this the pilot you were, you were going to put animals underneath to eat? We have explored it, and I would say we're still tentatively exploring it. However, what ended up happening is it became very clear that the height of the panels is a, a significant concern with okay. the, uh, the, the neighboring residents. Gotcha. And to do an agricultural um, um, system would, in fact, fault them higher than, um, than a standard system. And um, so, so we're a little bit... Um, Pygmy goats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pygmy goats. Yeah. yeah. And unfortunately, this, it's state-issued directives in terms of what the minimum height would be for something to qualify as this agricultural system. Okay. We would still love to do it, but we're, we're running into some, some density issues and some height issues and um, want to make sure we, we meet the residents' needs for, uh, for a, yep. a lower view shed here. Um, the question I always have is runoff. Um, mm. You know, agricultural fields are usually receiving areas, mm -hmm. and so There is you're quite gonna... a stream that goes through that. Well, I don't know if it's right there, but it kind of comes out into so that So you're citing, you're, and... you're going to keep everything on site? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. and, and we actually believe that it will improve the uh, improve the uh, pervious area and the amount of drainage that's, that's soaked in because rather than a, uh, a flat dirt field, we'll have um, a deep-rooted pollinator seed mix uh, on, the, on site. So mm -hmm. it okay. should actually uh, improve absorption. Will Good. you be taking any trees out when you do the because I know it's a big open area now, but I know there's tree line kind of. No, we're we're set off, uh, you know, to stay out of wetlands and also to stay out of any shade. We won't we yeah. won't be removing any trees or any uh, vegetation beyond crops. Just a question for me: How long does um, a facility like this typically, you know, wh what do you? How long does it stay in? Do, yeah. do you change it over, or is it, is it, you know, something that stays there for 20 years and that's it, or you? The, uh, the, the length of the contract with, with the state is a 20-year period, and then we anticipate you know, that the panels typically degrade some small percentage, like half a percent per year, something along those lines. And so there's, there's a lifespan um, be between 20 and 30 years. It, it sort of depends, but definitely for 20 um, afterwards remains to be seen um, exactly, but not, not more than, uh, even based on how the lease is set up, not, not more than 30, 35, something like that would be the maximum. And then is it something that people, I don't know if they've been around long enough, but do people typically at that point, would they take them out and transfer it back to farming land if they wanted to, or you would just exactly. renew the, with new technology and new units? Yeah. yeah, once the lease with the landowners has expired, to, you no know, permanent could impact. Turn it back though. to agriculture. I mean, we're not rezoning or anything, so it'd still right. be. Um, Zoned agricultural. So. Okay. If, if another developer or us or anybody at that point wanted to renew the project, it would have to be a, a, a new a whole project new. Re renewal as, as if a new, it was a new system. And I would add that a, uh, a removal surety bond will be posted to ensure that the, uh, the panels are removed at the end of the process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, you know, this came up with the prior discussion with mm -hmm. these uh, pilot idea here to mm -hmm. be the broker. 
uh, we have a, um, the River Road Solar Facility, and it was developed by one company and sold. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we knew when mm -hmm. that happened. Mm -hmm. Certainly weren't told it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. How do you work? Yeah. Um, yeah, so we work with financing parties. I mean, at times we sell projects if the economics are right. At other times we um, hold projects. And so there's not a long-term plan in place for this project. Okay. And so you may or may not stay with it. Ex exactly. Okay. Yeah, but it, it, to, to be fair, though, you know, our interests are aligned, um, you know, with whoever, if we were to sell this project, whoever would purchase the project. So, I mean, there's... Um, obviously financial incentives to make sure that the project continues to comply with the, um, with the special permit regulations long after, um, you know, it's permitted. So. Well, I'll tell you and, who not to work with. So we'll <laughs> talk later. Um, you know, it, it, it's a small industry overall, nationally speaking mm -hmm. still, and reputation matters. And yep. we, uh, we want to make, make sure to maintain a, a good reputation, both, you know, for future permits with, with either you guys or any other town uh, in the area, and also with, with other developers. But there is, we, we may sell the project. That, that is definitely a piece of how the business model works. But um, anybody who does purchase it will be bound to the same terms that we, uh, we come to within the special permit, within the lease with the landowner, um, and, and any other stipulations that are placed on it. So the idea, you know, really on our end is to make sure that all parties uh, come to agreement, and then those, are, those agreements are enforced throughout. Mm -hmm. Long term, it, it reflects back on us the, the type of project. And you've so. seen our pilot. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and, yes. And then just for my curiosity, um, where are you guys located? Like, how many projects have you done? What's your size, of your company? That kind yeah. of thing. We're just curious. Uh, we're, we're located out of Charlottesville, Virginia. Okay. Um, over, over the past 20 years, our, our, our principals have done nearly a billion dollars worth of investment, nearly a gigawatt across a few different types of, of energy form. Mm -hmm. um, we have a very large uh, 20 megawatt project that we've worked on in Connecticut. We have several projects that we are working on across the state now. We decided to specifically move into Massachusetts to pursue what's called the SMART program, mm -hmm. uh, Solar Massachusetts Renewable Target. Um, and, and that was the draw to us. We, we hadn't participated in the SREC program yep. previously or SREC 2. So for us, this will be our first greenfield development pro or set of projects here mm -hmm. that we are pushing forward across the state. But we have worked with uh, commercial and industrial in Massachusetts already. Yep. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to provide a, a statement of qualification so that you guys can know who we are. Yeah, um, just curious. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. I don't. So, so, do you have any specific comments you want to write down, Trevor? I um, I feel like you answered my question. Yeah, I don't I don't offhand at the moment. I I didn't get a chance to go to the planning board, so I I didn't get a chance to watch that meeting yet either. So I, I wasn't sure what concerns were of the uh, of the community and the neighbors. You're saying panel height mm. was a concern. Um, my concern was can it can it be turned back over to residential in the end and. Um, you mean agricultural? I mean, yeah, agricultural uh, in the end. So I, I, yeah, that's all I really have. Okay. Did you have anything, Kit? Um, I, no, I, I think that I'm going to recuse myself and stay neutral because I sit on the planning board. Sure. And right. I have more things to hear and stuff. Like that. <laughs> right, but, right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I certainly understand um, neighbors' concerns about mm -hmm. the height of the panels. So. Mm -hmm. You know, I am sad about the um, not, you know, using it as agricultural, you know, yeah. at the same time. But I certainly get it, and that's okay. And it's good that you're doing the pollinator uh, yeah. mix because, yeah. we're, we're, you know, we're really having problems. And, yeah, yeah. Um, and that, that means that the um, drainage will be a lot better because mm -hmm. you're using the native plants. What's a pollinator, uh, pollinator mix? What, uh, what do we it's your grass about? seed mix that has the plants that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, bees and stuff really um, enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. The hope would be that the, the bees would help pollinate the remaining agricultural yeah. land that's around. So I don't know how yeah. far they travel, but warm colors the is right warm, there Warm as colors well. is right there, yeah. 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 And we, you know, they're pretty stressed. stressed so. Yeah, bees are I, I just noticed right a lot le less <laughs> pollinators <laughs> around. So There have been studies that show that... Um, it, when people keep bees close to these things, which sometimes happen, we, you know, we have no idea if that would happen or not, but the bees thrive and the, the area around the, uh, the agricultural production around the projects actually increases. So, mm. you know, I, I, yeah. I'm passionate about land and property and conserving it and treating it well. And if I were talking right. about coming to pave a, pave a field over at 
I, I don't know if I could do it. Actually. Right. I, right. I, I don't believe in that. But but what we're doing, I think, leads to a, a temporary benefit to everywhere, and mm. then goes back to agricultural production in the long right. run. And if, it, and if right. it's wet, the root system will suck up a lot. Of that. Um, having a continual root system will, will stabilize the land a lot more and mm -hmm. suck up water versus, there can you know, be a lot when of you plow, every time you plow, it's... Mm -hmm. Well, I m mm -hmm. remember like a year ago, there was just, or maybe two years ago, there was a dust storm out of there that just mm -hmm. took over all of downtown, you know, just because it, it yeah. wasn't covered, it was mm -hmm. winter or whatever it was, but mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so that'd be good to have some coverage. Yeah, and, and we're certainly working to address concerns with siding as well. We want, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that uh, we're not, we're not causing uh, undue yeah. consternation or concern okay. in this. Well, thank you for thank coming you in. Much. I appreciate you sure. making the effort to come in. Yeah. No, no problem. And, it's good, and like I said, it's good. Really, I appreciate the fact that you're using a pollinator mix on the field. I, I'm excited about it. I think yeah. it's <laughs> no, just the I mean, best I, thing I, I, I really, you know, we're trying very hard to do, you know, push no-till and all that kind of stuff because I think it, for us it's going to make a huge difference because we're at the bottom of a bowl mm. and our water table has definitely increased yeah. and um, yeah. we've got to do more stuff to counteract it because we're having, you know, like this summer has been terrible with frequent rainstorms. Rain oh, yeah. so it's been yeah. <laughs> crazy. So, well, thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. Thank you very much. Have a thank you. Great night. Thank you. Uh, next is we have um, some. What do you have comments? No. I'm no comments, set. so just say no comments. Yeah. Yep. Well, why don't you, you put say it? yes, no, maybe so. Well, I mean, I was, I'm, I'm, I. I'd encourage you to put some comments, you know, because when, you know, if we send them out and, as being on the planning board too, you know, we get these things back and say, well, what do you mean no comments? Like, right. you, do you like it or do you not like it? What are your thoughts? Okay. And, you know. Well, I'm, it's it's I'm healthy happy. for the environment, or you go, you're happy because you're using a pollinator a, a mix. Pollinator. Sorry. Can I write my comments and pass it into you? Do I need to do well, it? Well, I think you should, as a group, vote on oh. it. Vote on the comments. I, I, I'm, I understand why they're not putting animals on the land because mm -hmm. of the height, but I am happy, very happy that they're using the pollinator mix, and I would, I think it's worth putting that in the comment because mm -hmm. it, it is more expensive. Injury. I agree. Okay. Uh, to to um, to do that and to use a pollinator mix, that's you know increases the cost of the project. So, by saying that we appreciate that, then that would encourage that to make sure it happens. And I encourage them if the concern was for the neighborhood to have a lower panel, and that's yeah. I mean, I certainly understand that. That that I encourage as well. So that would be another comment. I'm sorry, I, I was writing. Uh, about his abstention while you were talking, so lower, uh, yep. lower panels yep. to, to um, satisfy the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I just wish I had a little more time to read that. You know, uh, watch that meeting to see what other concerns are uh, of the town. But um, I, I haven't seen the meeting yet, so I yeah. think the, the big, the biggest concern for everybody was the, the view of the panels. Seeing them versus that gorgeous field. Is that the idea? I would think so too, but we need to we need to do our part on climate well, change, and, and I think this is the there, way to do it. There's seven acres. I don't forget how big it was, but that's seven more acres. It's not going to get pesticides all over it. And that's right. And it will have um, continuous root system under the pollinator and mix, and it's less carbon. Yep. I'm good. I ran out of room. <laughs> no, okay. one more comment. I'll give you more All right. I, I uh, do want to give him credit for the pollinator mix because I don't think people appreciate that it is much more costly. Got it. Got so it thank you. Save the bees. I've got yep. the um, appointments. Pollinator mix so and the lowering the panels. Yep. Right. To so the police department, Kiana Smith is assistant animal control officer. Term expiring six thirty nineteen. Um, I want to thank uh, thank her for volunteering. Um, I had found out. Um, Colleen was out from a tick bite. Oh no! Yes, and yeah. and from what so I hear, it was not more than a tick bite. The tick surgery. actually started to live in him. Yeah, so, oh, I mean no. it was terrible. Yeah. So um, he didn't do anything. It was embedded. He in... obviously oh, was not boy. spraying his pants with perithium. <laughs> I'm 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 giving him a bottle him? of Bronco yes. horse well, spray I, I so that his he soap can... is called tick off. And it, it has that perithium. Oh, yeah. and You just rub it on your pants or you rub it on your pets. Yeah, I've well, seen a ton of articles on that lately. 
NPR Honestly, the it's, I, I, okay. I, it, it's the only thing that works. So keep going. This is we're going to go, but I want to thank her for volunteering because we can poor talk Queen about this is, anytime, but get no, down to business. Yes. No, I, no, you can talk about <laughs> ticks and things, but you're no. not, the business part of the meeting is making decisions. Thank you, Wendy. You're yes. Welcome. But so do I have a motion you. to appoint? Yes. On behalf of the public. I make a motion, and I, but I want to thank her for filling in. Okay, Kiana Smith, we thank you so much. Trevor. We do. Do you make a motion? No, second. Mm -hmm. I second. Uh, any more discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, um, Ray, Raymond Berniski Jr. as an auxiliary police officer, term expiring 6-3 of 19. Second. Um, I make that motion, <laughs> then you can second it. All right. <laughs> I thought any you were making discussion? the motion. <laughs> no. no discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, a promotion to police officer Adam Sokolowski to, det to, to detective effective 9118 um, P2 S2. Pay grade step. Pay grade two, step grade two. Can step I read two. Um, John's sure. uh, Yes, I think you should because, um, because I, I think, I think it's, a, mm -hmm. it's a really nice uh, paragraph. So um, over the past five years, officer Adam Sokolowski has conducted and successfully uh, prosecuted cases involving sexual assaults, embezzlement, fraud, breaking and entering, home invasion, computer crimes, etc. Uh, Officer Sokolowski routinely writes search warrants for vehicles, residences, and technology related items. He has a close working relationship with the courts, district attorney's office, and state police detective unit. Um, Officer Sokolowski is the go-to person when a major crime is committed or connected with the town of Deerfield. Uh, it is therefore recommended that Adam Sokolowski be promoted to detective effective September 1st, 2018. So um, are you making the motion or would you like I, me to? Uh, yes, I wanted to read that and I would make a motion to, um, okay. to promote Adam Sokolowski to detective Adam Sokolowski. And I will second that and I want to thank Adam for, again, for all his hard, hard work. work. Yep, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, new business, the obelisk restoration. Yeah, you have the memo I sent you or that John Nobe prepared. They sort of yeah. an update on what's going on. You wanted yep. to talk about that or hear about that? Or talk um, or whatever. Well, um, I do know that through donations that yeah. it, Someone is now working on making a, an exact replica of our friend here in the glass box. And I believe I read that it's going to be made of bronze. Mm -hmm. And um, it's going to be mounted on its original pedestal in front of uh, DA's administrative office. And they've been working to, to beef that pedestal up, right? That's been our yeah. contribution. Yeah. Yeah. Private sources is going toward the, yeah. the, uh, the statue, statue itself. Wonderful. Yeah. Good. Um, um, so are we going to leave this um, guy in the corner for now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. No, they're, oh, because they're, they're going to make a um, mold out of a... Um, a different one. Different a different one, one down in Connecticut. Down in right. Connecticut. Yep, right. so he'll so, stay here. So he's just going to sit here. Okay. He will be here. It's separated yeah. at birth. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm getting used to him when you have no <laughs> lights on. Walking, walk in and back and forth. It, it, it almost does. seems like there was another person in here once in a while. It <laughs> made you feel at, late at night, but yep. um, I'm kind of used to him now, so that's good. So I'm uh, very okay. happy about that. Thank that's you, great. for no, John, for the update. That's re actually really exciting because it's over a hundred thousand dollars of money. So that's very nice. Okay. Okay, uh, state primary poll workers. Carol A. Morrow and Margaret K. Kosnick. Um, I make a motion we appoint them both for um, our, our um, prime, uh, to be our poll workers in the upcoming um, primary. primary and um, also the general election. And just a reminder that the primary is September 4th. And Sep yep. Please come out and do your civic duty. September 4th and then again in November. Please remember to vote. Okay. Oh, so I second that motion. Okay. Any further discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And thank you for I'll volunteering. I'll have a form for you to sign when you sign for him. So okay. Okay. I have it right oh, here. Oh, okay. Again. Letters received for the Dollar General store proposal. 
Um, the, the I thought this one, is the one. Yes. I thought this is the one we already had. Yeah. That he I, he sent to us. To, wasn't he going to send a new one? Yes, and I. Um, because this new this one is the one is not. I, I, we don't want to forward it to them. Oh. Yeah. So. He has drafted one. He, he was on vacation. I didn't expect to have one. I have it. Um, I'm not sure it's worded the way you want. So, um, uh, Did you, send, you, you haven't sent that. I out haven't. Um, uh, I, I will send it out to you to look at. So, can um, we just um, you can just speed it. this along to make sure we get this letter out? Can Can we just if we have comments? You can, can let get back to me. Get back to you. Yeah. Right. Go ahead. Well, um, yeah. Because so we to had us tomorrow, we'll, we can review it and just get back to it. Yeah. Because we had Lisa's going to be here tomorrow, so I'll I've already let her know this, and hopefully okay. we can catch up on a bunch um, of things. Only because, you know, we had already voted to send out a letter, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure it gets out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Board of Health comments. Um, um, just I just want to remind people elevated. that. The risk is um, um, for West Nile disease because it's been so prevalent in town has been raised to moderate, which is not anything really to worry about. You just be, need to be more vigilant um, in making sure you limit your activities in the evening when the mosquitoes are more active and um, wear insect repellent and just try not and make sure your screens are are uh, repaired and that you patrol your yards. Uh, I know it's so hard when we have rain almost every other day, but um, you know, really the, the, it's the breeding ground for mosquitoes and, and we're gonna have West Nile now until frost, there's no question. The, there's just um, at least four times the last two years disease load circulating in Deerfield. That doesn't mean it's, it's um, Anything really you have to worry about because in general West Nile disease people can get, will be bitten and not even know that they have it. But it is something to be aware of. And if you have an impaired immune system, you really need to be careful. That's all. And we are um, we're getting to the point where it's been wet enough. Um, you know, we've had drought for the last two or three years, so we haven't had to worry about Triple E very much. But we are having so much rain this summer. If it continues through the fall or we get a tropical storm come through, um, we will be worrying about West Nile disease. I mean, uh, Tripoli, which is what we're really testing for and concerned about. The only other notice that I had received was that there was, um, there was a, somewhat of a breakout of uh, hepatitis A infections in, you know, um, experiencing in homeless and, or substance use. Um, and that people should, you know, obviously get vaccinated. And we have, you know, we have that people living in close quarters, you know, close, close by. And um, so just, just to be, be aware of that. That was the only, only other notice other than that. Yeah. Okay. I have another mosquito meeting on Monday. So um, um, I'll get the information from DPH on a Department of Public Health on the status of triple E. Um, so far, there hasn't been any human cases, and we don't have to worry about it at this point. But like I said, it's really w weather sensitive, and um, the continued wet is is going to um, increase ask that. Can I clarify? When you say mosquito, are, are you saying the new Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District? Yes. Okay. Yep. We're meeting um, uh, on a regular basis, a couple times a month at least. So. Is there anyone in the public who would like to make a comment this evening? No. I just, okay. I just had these. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Bruce Hunter again. Um, was my understanding that we had either a grant or funding for somebody to assist us with solar array? Wasn't. The money we, set. we have money in the budget, and we were also hoping um, to get a grant. We haven't heard yet. Um, we did submit one to cover two things. One is this landfill project, so we were going to go one route with that. The other is to fix the problems with the okay. treatment, the small treatment plan. So the money we currently have in the budget? We could do we'll one do or the other. And if we don't get the grant, we'll have to choose which one we'll do, unless we take this route with this, these proponents who are here tonight. But that, there's some money at risk with the, the, the person that came tonight. 
I'm yeah. just saying, if there's money available in the town, that should be put aside if this consultant is being used to lessen our, the taxpayer's risk. Mm -hmm. That's uh, a good idea. If that could happen. Or use it for the other. I have to look at how we appropriated it. Okay. Um, I, think it's, I think it's general enough that we could possibly do that, but I'll have to look at that. And then the other question I had was relative to that um, solar array on the landfill, I, there was a mention of 40 acres. Do we know how much is usable on at the landfill? I, I don't. And do I'm we know how? There. I think a question that could have been asked that might still should be asked is to make this project viable for them, what size do they need, solar array do they need? Um, I, 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 I know they've done a site visit, um, so they're interested. Okay. Um, whatever is available that is seemingly adequate, because the MA had told me they, they have ab absolutely made a site visit. But okay. Then we had some issues several weeks ago relative to depression mm -hmm. in the, the um, Well, cap. that's why I want to make sure that whatever the DEP, is, I mean, they have to contact DEP so to make that sure area would probably be off limits. Mm. Well, we don't this, is, this is a whole area that, and this, this is part of how we run our meetings. It's mm -hmm. difficult because this topic is another thing to look at. Yeah. If we say we go with what these folks, you know, are thing, and, and, and I still, I'm questioning is why, but mm -hmm. um, they can't penetrate the earth. Right. Okay, so what they're going to have to do is put large concrete pads that are, are large enough so they don't press down on that line. Right. And because, well, they have to anchor the, so the panels don't get blown, blown away. Right. But there's one thing that we, at least I am aware of, is that under the landfill, there's a lot of garbage that's constantly decaying and it's moving. Mm -hmm. And that and we way. never know when there's going to be something that sinks. Mm -hmm. And what happens if there, they put this thing there, and then all of a sudden, it does sink. Is the town liable for the it destroyed the solar array? Are we, you know, how how is that all going to be dealt with? I know to me, it wouldn't affect the pre people that are here tonight because they're going to sell the project right. prior to that. But I, it would be the person who bought the project would probably end up suing the town. I would think because I, want, I, yeah, no, I know no, they've I done this uh, on many landfills the, across yeah. the state, so I'm curious how they're handling yeah. that. You're yeah. right. I mean, it, it might that be was the my way the cap was done. Yeah. First you know, That's why they want to see the capping report. Yep. Um, it might be that the cap might have issues. It yep. might not be able to be done. Right. Yep. But I mean, through the course of years, I remember, you know, there were several buildings that were put there. You know, and you have lumber and everything all crisscross like that, and you start putting dirt up. There's oh, a lot of voids. A lot of air. A lot of air. You know, and then it takes a long time for that all to settle down. And you know, you get like a mushroom effect up here, where everything's kind of just pushing, it's holding it. And meanwhile, the water's going through, and it's fil filtering everything in, and it creates a void. And at some point, well, we did have. I mean, I'm sure the yeah. gas yeah. escaping yeah. too is eventually. Well, well plus we have the other issue was I thought we, we do have potential. We have t monitoring wells. What? Right. Mon monitoring, monitoring wells. Oh, down yeah. below. Yep. So they are able to detect issues. What if we had to do repair? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. So Good sense. question. There's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of variables. Carolyn, mm -hmm. you have the history. I have a question. Um, and I've been trying to figure out why we went far down the road on the landfill solar. We hired Beth to do, Greenblatt well, to do the work. Wouldn't you have assessed by that point yeah. earlier than that point if the landfill was for what I mean whatever the design was that they were going to do before was okay apparently um, I mean that wasn't the issue what the issue was the hookup the three connection. phase power right I know but I'm and just I'm, I'm not yeah I, I'm not asking about that I'm asking about if it had already been ascertained yeah. that the landfill no, was suitable for development for yeah I, I mean, that was, that was never the discussion. Yeah, she it was did, Diana doesn't think we got that far. I don't think far. you got that far, because you never got the RFP well, out the door, so you wouldn't have had... Well, we had, that, we had the guy come in, and we were... I mean, we had multiple, multiple meetings, so I don't know. I mean, I can't imagine and that he would I, have I did ask design. Casey about this, and she thought you, when she left, there was a TIFF group meeting. 
Yeah, that's what um, she said to me, and I don't. We don't understand that really, but um, and you know, it all came, got developed. Beth did all this work, and then nobody came in that could. Nobody. I'm trying to get an understanding well, of what actually my happened. Well, my my understanding was the when they went to do the hookup, get the guarantee of the hookup from Western Mass Electric at the time. Mm -hmm. um, they it was tens yeah. and tens of thousands of dollars, and they wanted us to pay it. And it was like, what? I mean, it would have taken five or seven years of, of the payback. To get the payback, yeah. To, to, to cover that, and they wanted us to upfront it. And it was like, what? You're kidding me. No way. I mean, so, so, so is there something we learned during that well, that would help think, us discern what to do with this I think that we proposal? learned something yep. relative to the old DFA wastewater treatment plant. There was not three-phase power, I think, mm -hmm. at that point. And they had to run three-phase power to the solar array. Now, I'm, I don't know what three-phase power is relative to landfill, but that might be an issue. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I things, don't know enough. All these small things, you don't want to spend a hell of a lot, excuse me, a lot right. of money prior to. We'll I mean, the landfill, the, the, the solar on the, um, at the, at the sewer treatment plant was not just the, the three-phase power. It was also the angle of the... Oh, oh understood. I mean, it was that, oh, like... Some of the holdup was like, getting the three-phase yes. an additional cost. Yes, right? yes. They were unanticipated. Mm -hmm. Right. But the, the whole installation was poorly designed and, oh, you know... That's... I, 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 that's exactly why the town should not get involved exactly. in stuff like that. That, and that, I got a church I can sell you. <laughs> <laughs> that was my last question. Do we own it yet? Um, we have, uh, I think you signed. I signed something. Yes. After, after, since you've approved yes. the we have no key minutes yet. that you approved we have, tonight, we, don't have a key yep. yet. we can have, uh, we'll start, get that written up for Barbara to certify, and I've got the rest of the documents to file in the registry. So we, that's. So then. You can uh, follow me. The design and <laughs> selection committee will be established to go through and look at whatever they're going to do? We would. We have $25,000 for a feasibility study? I don't know. I think, yeah, about twenty five. We do. We, we do. haven't we gone, we haven't taken it that far. Okay. And, I, and I, haven't, I haven't reached out um, to the we'll get for $25, Franklin Regional you Housing Authority. I, I didn't, yeah. it, wasn't my, it wasn't the amount of money I would have suggested. Okay, okay thank you. I'm going to work with uh, uh, David. Okay, so can our next meeting is on just, September. Oh, yes. Yep, I just sorry, wanted to, I'd ahead. like to do this for Sue to just hit uh, hit some quick things for There's the kids. There's a nice article about Sue's family in today's recording, Oh, I didn't too. get to see it yet. Oh, oh, I haven't oh read okay. It yet. So uh, just soccer for, you know, for um, K, K through 6, registration is Tuesday, August 28th from 5 to 6 here at the town hall, and then Friday, August 31st from 5 to 6 here at the, um, and then assessments will be uh, September 4th at Memorial Field. Um, and then uh, Deerfield Soccer for kindergarten is registration is also the 28th and the 31st from five to six at the Deerfield Town Hall. So if um, you get the little kids going on that. Uh, then we even have pre-K soccer. So um, that will be, um, let's see, for three and four year olds and their, and their parents, Deerfield residents only. 15 slots, um, Monday, September 17th through October 8th. There's four weeks from uh, 5 to 6 p.m. Um, old Deerfield Baseball Field, Route 5 and 10. And let's see, there was a Union 38 Field Hockey. Um, let's see, and that was, uh, didn't say when Reds, so practice was, um, Practices are Sundays, uh, September 16th through October 21st, not the 14th, from 4 to 5 at the Frontier Field, Regional Field Hockey Field. So, and then there's a walkability workshop September 4th, uh, which is Election Day. Um, so, and that's, uh, I think um, Lisa White is doing that. Yeah. Um, and it looks like that would be, join us here uh, September 4th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Oh, at the Senior Center. Uh, for a walkability workshop, um, that's it. You that's should put that on the website. Yeah, yeah. So that's all I got. Thank you. Okay. okay so our next meeting coming up is going to be September fifth at seven o'clock, and we have another meeting on the nineteenth of September at seven o'clock. So oh, I think I think we're going to switch the, uh, the 
September 19th back to 6, if that was all right with you. Is that too early? That's what I, I have it at 6 now, but, but it's up to you guys. I don't yeah, um, had seven. Can we go? Can we go? Uh, if you have nothing, I'd like to just go one more meeting. Mm -hmm. I'm, all, I'm, all, I'm looking at a lot of hay that I haven't been able to cut. Oh, no, so no that's okay. So you want to depend on the, the weather. 19th. If it's rainy, I don't care. I'll be here at five, but otherwise, you know, it's. So, so wait till October. October. We yeah, were, so we'll do the we, yeah, 19th. It's okay. If yep. you want to go through the 19th. It's not just you, it's also the public, you know, mm -hmm. because we've changed. This yep. year we had to change, so. I would suggest sticking with seven to you know you can consistently okay. meet at right. six. Yeah. Okay. I mean, okay. No, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. great. Somebody want to make a motion? Make a to motion to dissolve. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.